So for an eye study, I want to start again with the kind of block of clay. And I want this to be fairly thick, about an inch. I'm going to sketch out the rough placement of an eye, kind of the edges of my nose and eyebrow. And then I need to make a large hole. This is actually the eye socket, so it is bigger than the eyeball itself. Now I'm going to add kind of the eyebrow ridge up near the top corner. So um, depending on how much clay you have to work with on your study, you know, you might have this um, sticking out more or less. So this is sort of this teardrop shape and I'm having the pointed end um, pointed in towards the corner of the eye or the, um, you know, uh, center of the face. So I'm going to score this on and smooth this together. I'm working with water-based clay, which is why I'm using um, scoring and slip. And then I just start to kind of think about the planes of it here. I'm not going to give too much worry about this at the moment, but it helps me uh, lay things out. So now I need to create my eyeball. So I'm going to put it in there and check size. Make sure that it sticks out perhaps a little bit, but not too much. So I'm actually going to add a little more clay because it wasn't really popping out enough. Then I'm going to score this in as well. Being careful that I don't flatten the eye as I press it gently on there. So now I want to create kind of two little dots um, in the corner of the eyes. Right now I'm actually creating the lids, but you'll see in a second I'm going to pause and take a little ball of clay and put those on either end and that helps create the um, more oval or you know not fully rounded shape of the eyeball. So now with this coil that I've rolled out I'm going to thin one edge and that's actually going to be my lid. I start with the lower lid because oftentimes the upper lid folds over the lower lid so to get that um, look you want to start with the lower lid. So I'm going to get ready to place this and I want to think about placement um, and I'm going to want to fill in that gap a little bit. So cutting this off, smoothing it out a little bit on the edge, and then I use my wooden modeling tool to press it in somewhat because I also want to re replicate the um, indentation of the under part of the eye. I'm not fully finishing this at this stage. I do want to see all the other details. So now I'm making my upper lid. When I get ready to place the upper lid, I do want to think about the peak of the up upper eyelid. And that's about a third of the way in from the corner of the eye. You can see in this example here. And actually the lower lid, the, the lowest point is at the um, lower third from the edge. Now, of course, like every sort of anything doing with nature or humans and anatomy, everything thing is variable depending on who and what you're sculpting. So these are all averages. There is no one exact way to sculpt something. So now I'm going to start to, sl to slowly blend and smooth. And the most important thing here is I don't want to lose that quality of um, the lid of the eye folding over the eyeball that I've created. There are other ways to sculpt an eye. Some people prefer to just start with a solid piece and carve away. I find that that tends to take a little more specialized tool. So with limited tools, this is what I find to be the most easiest. So sometimes I still do need to go back in and reestablish that fold and that dimension. And so I will carefully go in with some tools like a little piece of plastic or something. So you can see here that I'm starting to refine and think about dimension. So I carved a fairly harsh sort of wrinkle line. I'll soften that up, but it helps give me an idea of where things might go. I need to add a little more um, maybe dimension. Maybe this person has a bag under their eyes or um, they need something like that. So I'm checking sort of the corner of the eye and the brow ridge, thinking about where that folds down. And you can't see it here, but I am actually like touching the corner of my um, brow ridge to get an idea of where that sits in relationship to what I'm sculpting. And I'm also going to add a little bit of the nose because that just helps me orient myself in terms of where this is all placed. So I'm not going to get into too much detail with the nose here, but just to give me an idea of everything. Now, you know, there's some dimension on the side of the face here too, right? Some cheek or cheekbone. We're not doing the whole face, but all of these things really impact the overall look of the eye. So even though this is an eye study, we are giving at least a little bit of attention to what goes around it. So here's where, as I start to refine, I might come back in with my just barely damp um, brush to start to smooth things away. Yeah. 
All right, and so here is um, my eye study. I can continue to work on this. The next thing is to think about the eyeball, like the iris and the pupil. And so for something, if we weren't going to add color with like say paint or glaze, the trick is to actually carve out where the eyelid and the iris go, or at least dent it in so that the, the shadow created actually implies the difference in color. So if you have a darker color eye, like a dark brown, then it's actually gonna be carved more deeply because you'll have a deeper shadow and a lighter eye will have a slightly um, lighter indentation. You might add some clay up at the eyebrow to imply the texture of the hair as well, right? So all of these little details, even for a study, just start to let you practice how to add them and orient them.